everybody, it's Claire here from Sewing by Claire and are we ready for the next instalment in making our Marcel dress? I hope so because today we're going to be working with our bodice pieces and we're going to be ironing on first or pressing on the interfacing first and then we'll be making that bodice and the straps up ready for um, the first part so you can see how your dress is starting to come together. So if you've joined me straight in at this section, then pop back to the other sections because we've talked all about the preparation. We've talked all about the design, taking measurements, how to choose your, your size, how to make a toile, how to adjust the toile, and then we went on to cutting out. So hopefully step by step, this is building into um, a little bit of a sewing adventure for you that you're really enjoying. And I'm certainly enjoying showing you my processes anyway, so it's great to have you all here. So I'm going to turn the camera down and we'll get started because time's of the essence and I know that you'll all want to be wearing your dresses soon. So let me crack on and we will get um, stitching. Okay, so for this next step, we're going to need our two bodice pieces. We've got our back bodice piece with the slanted edge. And for that, we've got to, um, our piece of lining cut on the fold, our piece of fabric, fashion fabric cut on the fold, and our piece of interfacing cut on the fold. And then we've also got our bodice front. And again, we've got these cut on the fold. So the bodice front and the fashion fabric, the bodice front in the lining, and the bodice front in the interfacing. So that's all still attached to my pattern. I keep everything attached to my pattern. And then finally, we've got our straps and we've got two, let me just take that pin out. We've got two cut in our fashion fabric and we've got two cut in our interfacing. So that's where we're at at this moment in time. The first, next thing I'm going to do is we're going to sort of like put all of this together ready for pressing. So let's take out our pins to start off with. I should have taken some of these out. Keep your, pat keep your pattern pieces on top of your pieces whilst we're just working with them. And if you remember, we've put all of the notches in place on these already. So they were all at the end of the last video we did our notches. So if you haven't done your notches, um, your little snips into your fabric to mark your positions, that's a notch there, then you need to go and do that if you're jumping straight into this section. Because those are our clues as to where everything will go. So let's work with our straps first. I'm going to take off the pattern piece and just put it to one side and then I'm going to take my strap pieces and I'm going to get my wool pressing mat, hopefully they'll fit on and you can use your ironing board if you want to as well and then we're going to put right sides down onto our cutting mat, let me go diagonally, I'll fit it on better diagonally. And these are just long rectangles and then we're going to take one piece of our strap fabric and we've got now, this is the um, interlay, in, this is the interfacing. And what it has is it has a knobbly side. So if you run your finger over it, you'll feel little dots and little bumps and that's the glue. And then it's got a smooth side as well. So make sure you're working with the right side and you want to put the knobbly side down onto your, the wrong side of your fabric because this is what's going to strengthen these straps and hopefully stop yours from falling down. Um, but it does give that a little bit of strength to them so that it's got a bit more structure. You're then going to take your pressing cloth and I'm going to use my silk organza one because interfacing doesn't like a lot of heat. It will melt and it will stick to the bottom of your iron. The other thing is that if you put this down with the wrong, the wrong way up by accident, and the glue is facing up, again, it'll either stick to your pressing cloth or it will the glue will stick to your pressing cloth or it will stick to the bottom of your iron and it makes a right mess. So always make sure you've got your dotty, your, your glue side down, which is the rough side. Just pop that on top like that. And then for my pressing cloth, as I said, I've got silk organza. You could use a tea towel. You could use a, a fabric handkerchief, which is nice and thin. You can use a scrap of your fabric. So if you've got a scrap of your viscose, you could always use that as well. The silk organza just allows you to see through so that you can see what you're working on. So that's great. So um, it just helps with placement and just to make sure that you don't sort of slip your interfacing off slightly like that because we don't want it to be off the fabric we want it to be absolutely matching because you cut it from the same piece of pattern piece so it should fit on there absolutely perfect if your your strap is curving slightly and doesn't want to lay straight 
just manipulate your fashion fabric because that possibly will be slightly more fluid than the interface and the interface will be quite stiff and therefore you the, the interfacing if it's been cut from the same pattern piece will be the shape that you're trying to get your that's your like your master shape if you like for what you want your inter, uh, your fashion fabric to be at so sometimes things can get a little bit out of sync and we'll see that more with the bodice but just pull it in line with your interfacing before you then start to press and all will be well let me just get my iron and then we'll be ready to press okay so press some cloths over the top of your interfacing your interfacing is directly on top of your fabric and then you, you will need to just have a quick look at your instructions and there should sometimes on the salvage edge of a interfacing sometimes there's a little printed instructions as to have your iron onto two dots and also sometimes to have some steam and it'll tell you how many seconds to hold your iron in place in order to press this so just be careful that when you're moving your iron around you aren't shifting the interfacing off your fabric and if we have to trim it slightly at the end, then don't worry about that. That's okay. I was just sticking to my pressing mats, to my uh, yeah, for all pressing mats slightly, but that's okay. Just peel it off. That's I've got a little bit of overhang, but we'll trim that off in a second. So we're just pressing this on top like this. It just takes a few minutes, but err on the side of caution, and just do it for a little bit longer than you think rather than a little bit shorter than you think. That's the best advice I've got because it does sometimes take a little bit longer than you think. And we, we want it to be fixed in place so that it's not going to come undone at all. You can have a look as well on the um, fabric and when it's cooled down, just give it a bit of a waft. And you can see how much, if I just show you this piece of interfa this piece of strap, look how fluid that fabric is. And if I show you this piece now, can you see how much stiffer it is? And that's the effect of the interfacing onto it. It's going to give it that body and that structure that we need to make a nice strap. And when it's cooled down, you can also just have a little go at a corner and just see if you can pull it away. You don't want to, when it's cooled down, that is, you don't want to be able to pull the interfacing off the fabric. Just test on one corner. And if you can't, then you know you've got that absolutely spot on. If you can pull it away, then just go back and just iron it for a little bit longer. Just press it, keep that heat on there and just make sure that it's it's adhering perfectly. So we're going to repeat that for the other strap as well. So I'll do that in a second off, off screen because you don't need to see that. And then once you've done that, then again, put your pattern piece with your straps, your two iron straps, and then in the seam allowance, just put one pin just to hold it together and it's just a really good tip to get used to doing this whenever you're dressmaking because losing your direction is going to be one of the the key things that's going to get you in a mess um or, or make you feel uncertain of what you're doing and once you start to get doubt then you know it, it's easy for that to build and for you to question yourself so every time you've finished ironing even if you're going to be using that straight away it's no trouble taking one pin out but that way then if you get distracted and come back to it you're not having to try and think now which way up was that piece or what piece is it you know already so i always just use one pin in the seam allowance and, and attach it back to my pattern pieces so let's now work with the back piece there's our piece of um, interfacing while we're here let's just press our lining you might not need to but let's just give that a quick press while we're here to make sure that's all nice and flat and going to be working nicely for our garment when we come to sew with it just keep your interfacing out the way so it doesn't get tangled up don't want it sticking onto this by mistake and then just pop your centre back to one side and just remember that the slant here so there's a there's a it's wider here than it is at the top make sure the narrow section is at the top and pop that to one side and then with the back piece as well work out which is your top and your bottom from that slant on the side and then again I'm just going to give this piece a quick press just to make sure it's lovely and flat before we start putting our interfacing onto it just takes a few seconds doesn't it and pressing is is really quite key when you're dressmaking and then we're going to then take our piece of interfacing that's the one for the strap see I'm getting mixed up 
to put that together because I'll save it up for later. So get your nice long piece of interfacing, have a look at the side so that you can see where that slant is and make sure that you've got your slant on the side that is the right way up. And then you're going to lie your interfacing on the top of your fabric. And just mine's, I can see mine's just peeping out at the bottom there. So I'm just gonna pull that up slightly and that will hold that in place so that that interface, that interfacing is giving me back the actual design because you know, this, this fabric is so fluid, it can move um, all over the place. And so we're just bringing it back into line for us. Cover it over with your press cloth again. And we're just going to press all of that, that on in place. And I tend to find a quick, quick kind of scoot over, quick press, lift it up and move it. Your iron, lift your iron up and move it. Gives it a little bit of hold and then I go in with a little bit more time, a little bit more heat. And then towards the end, I'll switch the steam off and I'll just make sure that that's kind of all nicely drying and all in place. And then when you're ready, you can move along for a bit longer. Put your steam back on again and just move along. Make sure that that's all pressing all nicely. And then I'm going to move it along. Now I can see again here, can you see where my fabric is dipping over the top of my, of my interfacing? I'm just going to pull that, it's not quite stuck on properly, so I can pull it back slightly, it was just quickly adhered to it. And now I can just make sure that my fabric is in the right place underneath my interfacing, so that, that will all lie nice and flat. You want no creases in your fabric underneath, that's got to be nice and flat. And then when you're ready, again, you can just put that heat on. And you want no creases in your interfacing either. So again, I'm just attaching all of that together. And again, this is going to make it lovely and strong and stable and give us a really nice body band. So just take your time doing this section because it is worth getting it right. And you'll find as well that the iron, the pressing cloth will allow the iron to go nicely all over the interface and it, it really does help to just skim over the top of that interfacing rather than link it all together. Okay, so now we've only got two pieces now because your interfacing is now one with your fashion fabric. And again, I put that right side down on my fashion fabric and I adhered the rough side of the interfacing to the wrong side of my fabric piece. Again, line up my lining so that that's all together and I've got the right orientation. And then I'm gonna just pull those two ends together. Choose my pattern piece so that's on the right way as well. Make sure nothing's folded over. And then I'm going to take a pin and just put that back on together again so the pattern piece is pinned onto my my fabric pieces okay and I don't but I'm not pushing a hard crease so just keep that nice and fluid just on the corner on the um, fold there and you guessed it we're going to now take our front bodice pieces let's just iron our lining first again just to make sure that that's all ready we've got the iron here we might as well just give it a little bit of a press if you wear um, natural fibres next to your skin like cotton or viscose or silk then that really does make it lovely against your skin especially in a hot weather when this dress is for hot weather so it's worth it to, to do that so again there's our front let's put that to one side let's take our front of our bodice and I'm going to start on one side here because these were all cut from one piece and I've got a bit of a fold up just there so let's just iron our bodice now just to make sure that that's nice and flat ready for taking the interfacing. Just making sure I'm not ironing anything under. Try and keep it to shape as much as you can, but we're going to pull it to shape again in a minute. Okay, so I'm happy with that. So now let's work on one side at, at, at a time. Let's take our interfacing and bobbly side down. So I've got the wrong side of my fabric for my bodice on the ironing surface and I'm just resting 
the interfacing on the top. We have got notches, so you can match up the notches on the centre front as well. That will help too. Keep all of that together. Mine's just slightly gone off strap side. So again, I'm just pulling up the interfacing. No, I'm not. I'm pulling up the fashion fabric so that it's going to match the interfacing. It all sits all nicely together and that my notches are on top of each other. Okay, so once I'm happy with that, and you might find that things start shifting around for, with, with, for you, and if they do, just take a pin and just pop it at an angle through your fabrics and just hold them onto your either your ironing board or onto your cutting mat, and that will just help things just stay in place for you. And if you've got glass head pins, you can press right up to those. So let's just adhere the interfacing onto the fabric. As I say, just give it a quick whiz over first. Oops, technical term, quick whiz over. A bit like with when I'm doing my hoovering, that is. Just give it a quick whiz over. Okay, so let's just, we've done that into the centre. Now before I iron that too much more, I'm going to take those pins out and I'm just going to move things along. Because again, I want to just move this fabric up and I wanted to do it before I'd pressed everything down. So if you've got a, a curvy bit or a complicated piece, just do enough just to start that, that interfacing being adhered on first before then you can then go back in and do your full press to make sure that everything's okay. So that glue starts to stick quite quickly. So now I'm happy that I've got the shape that I want. So now I'm going to just carry on now and just do the actual adhering, uh, adhering, sticking of the, of the interfacing with the heat of the iron to my, the wrong side of my pattern piece here, my fabric piece. And that's going to make sure that sits really nicely. And then once again, I'm going to line it line it up with my fabric just just lay it over the top and I'm going to take my fabric piece I'm going to fold them both in half and take my pattern piece and just pin that on top so again I'm keeping myself organized and it you might say it's really obvious which pattern piece is which at the moment and I agree but it's one of those habits that if you get into it it'll really help you when you've got sleeves that look similar to front panels or you know, just understanding, especially, you know, I mean, I've got my Upton dress on that I made and the the, cent the side front panels here looks very similar to the side back panels. So that would be a very easy mistake to make and to get those mixed up. So that's why I'm just saying these little tips, they might not seem, you know, that much to start off with. But if you can get into the habit of doing these things so they became, become second nature, a bit like measuring your grain lines as well. You know, I'm a big stickler for grain lines then um, it really will just help you in the future because you'll just get into the habit of doing it and it'll just be second nature. Okay, quite a long section on pressing, but hopefully I've covered off why it's important, what you can do in order to make sure that your fabric matches and stays the right shape. Because if, you, if, you, if it is slightly off and then you just go with the fa fabric, then you're gonna just you might cut off some that then makes your neckline uneven that type of thing, so that's why we're trying to make everything the same way. So then let me just put my lining on top of there just for a moment, fold the two ends together, get my pattern piece the right way round so I can see how I'm working with it, and then I just then pop that a pin in this top section just here, just in the seam allowance. And again, so we've got our, I'll just do my other strap because I've still got to do that one yet, my second strap. And then meet me back here and get your sewing machine all ready and put your thread and your bobbin thread um, the same colour as you want to be stitching your garment in. And we'll be ready for make, doing some stitches. So the first pattern piece I want you to grab now, interface pattern piece, is going to be your straps. And we can take the pin out for our pattern. And then we're going to take our pattern piece off and put it straight away. Oh back into our bag. Also going to just take some scissors as well because the first thing I want us to do is just neaten up the edges of these sleeve, um, straps. So where I've got an overhang of my interfacing there 
and again down here. And that's very common. I'm just going to take my scissors and as smoothly as I can, I'm just going to take off that excess whilst trying not to cut into the actual pattern piece. So if it's only a very, very fine smidge, you can choose to leave it if you want to. But here, I definitely would re remove that edge and just smooth it off just along your the in line with your fabric. So you're smoothing off the excess interfacing. I'm not smoothing off the fabric because the fabric is the cut pattern piece, isn't it, that we want for our outfit, our dress. So I'm just trimming the interfacing back. If you've got any big gaps where you've missed the interfacing on the back of your fabric piece, then you can choose to just go back in and just sort of patch it up with a bit of interfacing. But there's our strap now, that's fine for that one. And then we'll go on to just on to do this one. So just neaten up your pieces too, as best as you can. It's just a, it just makes it easier when we come to the next section because then you're not guess trying to guess where your seam allowance is because we use the edge of a fabric for our seam allowance in making this dress. And sometimes that's just because the fabric can shrink slightly as you're working with it um, and you're pressing it, but hopefully you've got most of that shrinkage out of the way when you pre-wash. Okay, so I've just got a few pieces there, as you can see, so they can just go into the bin. And then the next thing we're going to do is we're going to fold our straps in half. And to get our pins, we're going to put our raw edges together. And then we're going to put some pins in at right angles to the cut edge. All the way down. And use as many as you like. If you don't like using pins, then you can also use um, binding clips. So these are binding clips. And these just, I'll do one with strap, with pins, and I'll do one with binding pins, and then you can see how they, how they go together. So just try and make sure everything's all square, that your ends are all together. Just sit in nicely. There we go, so that's one all pinned together. And let's do the other one straight away. So raw edges together. And then these little binding clips are just strong enough. They're really good for bag making, binding clips are. When you're working with slightly thicker fabrics. But also binding clips are very good if you're sewing with children and you don't want them to be press, um, stabbing themselves with the, with the pins all the time, then binding clips make a really good alternative. So raw edges together. We have our binding clips all on there. Okay, so then the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to go to our sewing machine. And it's going to be the first time we're actually stitching anything. So we're just going to make sure our machine is set up correctly. So I've got a size 70 Microtex needle in. So Microtex refers to the point of the needle. Let me just show you on my, it's here. So how I keep my needles just in this takeaway tubs that have just been labelled up. And I've got Microtel, oh, they're 80s. Hold on one second, where's my 70s gone? I've obviously not got as many 70s as I want. So these are my, my, my Microtex needles by Schmetz. And I, I really like the, um, need, the point of a, a Microtex needle. I use it for most of my sewing um, and I find those to be really good ones. And as I say, I'm using 70 or 80 is fine on these lighter weight fabrics. I'd probably use an 80 if I was, I'm sorry, I'm making the right noise, aren't I? I'd use um, an 80 if I was sewing with linen or something a little bit firmer, but it being this viscose is nice and fine, so therefore 70 is just fine. I've got my machine set up on a straight stitch and I've got my stitch length sets automatically at 2.2, but 2.5 again is fine, but again, I wouldn't go too much bigger than that for your construction stitch. And at the moment, my needle is in the middle of the hole on my presser foot. I've just got an ordinary presser foot on here. So what I like to do is just get my seam allowance set up right, and you can use your machine bed here. I've got a, a line on here on my machine bed just there that says that that's a a one centimeter stretch, so you can use that. Or if you've got a tape measure or a seam gauge, you can use your finger to just keep the tape measure just to the back of the needle here. 
so that's in line with the needle and then just see where the mark is on the edge of the presser foot and I can see that I need to be just proud of my presser foot to be at one centimetre, so that's fine. Because on quite a lot of machines, you can actually move your needle across to the left or to the right. Mine doesn't want to move. It does now. So I can move my needle all the way across to position zero and I can move it all the way back to position seven. So that gives us that ability then to move our, our presser, our needle, so that it's in line with our presser foot. And that's really useful if you're doing a quarter of an inch seam allowance, so that it stays nice and accurate. Because seam allowances are important, because if you take too generous a seam allowance, so say if, if your seam allowance is one centimetre, which it is for this dress, and you're veering more towards 1.2, 1.3, your dress will come out smaller than the measurements in the pattern. Likewise, if you're st stitching at slightly less than one centimetre seam allowance, your dress will come out slightly bigger than, um, than intended. So it, it is a tool you can use sometimes. If you're in between sizes, you can sometimes fudge the seam allowance slightly. But on this dress, we want it to stay true to our measurements because we've done our... Um, Twelve, and that's assumed one centimetre seam allowance. So that's why we're going to be doing that. So let me just get my machine set up for that into back into three point five, and so it's in the middle. And then I'm going to run my fabric along the edge of the one centimetre seam mark. I am going to reverse at the back and at the stop at start and stop. So and reverse. Hold on to your threads when you start and I'm going to put my needle in my work as well to hold it whilst I'm, I'm stitching. Um, when we come to, just a quick quick thing because I just thought about it and I'll forget if I wait till the end of doing the straps. Whilst we're making, when we make the twirl, we make that in a different order because we don't have to add the lining to it and we don't need to do things like understitch and clip curves. We were just making a quick test to see how it fitted. So we're not going to jump ahead we're doing the things in slightly different order to the way that we made the the bodice for the twelve just so that you know okay so let's put my pins cushion over here and then just running my edges of my fabric along the one centimeter seam allowance mark and i keep my straps nice and even Needle in the work so that we, when we take those pins out, we don't make it a job. And we want these two straps to be nice and even, so that's why we're keeping to our one centimetre seam allowance. And then when we get to the end here, I'm just going to reverse at the end. Needle out, and then we can cut our threads. Okay, first bit of stitching done on the actual garment. So now the same, exactly the same with the binding clips. Get my threads out of the way. So pop that down, line it up with your one centimetre seam allowance, a few stitches forward, stitches back, and then needle in the work. But then as you get close to your clips, you need to take those out and just put them in your pot. But it's, it's much easier but then for them for children with it getting them having them pins if they're having to go at making a little dress for themselves okay reverse at the end again needle out and take our threads off right put our sewing machine to one side for a minute because the next thing i want you to do before you turn these round is just get your ironing board again your ironing mat i'm using this one and the first thing that I want you to do is just using your press cloth because we're still on the interfacing because we're working on the inside of our straps, aren't we? When we sewed this together, we've got the interfacing on the outside and we've got our straps, our fashion fabric on the inside. And we're just going to press the straps flat, the stitches flat first. It's called setting the seam. And then the next thing I want you to do is fold back one piece of your seam allowance and then just in that edge, just get the nose of the iron and just press that seam allowance back. This will help you when you turn it through. Just gives that fabric a bit of a crease and a bit of a memory. 
try not to get onto your um, interfacing otherwise it will will cause it problems and then on the we've done so we've folded one side back look that's our seam where the middle is now we're going to fold the other side back and then being very careful just to be right on the very edge and watch your fingers turn off the seam if you need to we're just going to press that seam allowance so that the seam allowance is back on itself can you see all the way along try not to get onto your interfacing if you can help it i'm just using the very edge of the iron just keeping it as neat as possible and there we go so that's just got that folded back because now if we now tuck the edge of the strap in so we're making of the tube so we've just folded the edge of the strap in there look and then we can start and pull the strap out you might have a turning tool or something like that that you can use for this as well but i'm just doing it this way so that people who haven't got a turning tool can find a way and also you can use the edge of a of your ruler or your seam gauge just to get you started and then we're going to just keep pulling this out it just takes a little bit of time but if you dig into where it's all gathered up then it all starts to quite quickly pull through try to resist the urge of pushing all of this into this tube here because you just get too congested you're much better if you can work on this basis like this and just ease it out as you go through so if you've got a turning tool it'll be much quicker and also you could use um, like the edge of a pen if you wanted to so make sure you've got the ink side covered up so you're not going to be drawing on it and then if you hold on to the outside of the tube you can sometimes give things a bit of a wiggle and that will help things come through as well so i'm just going to turn these through you use whichever method you want either copy what i'm doing or if you've got a knitting needle at the end of a knitting at uh, the blunt and the the capped end of a knitting needle works really well too or you might have the prim turning tools or something else that you use just to turn these through so just turn iron them both the same way and then turn them both through the same way so once you've got them both turned through then your seam allowance should be sitting out inside look like i don't know if you can just kind of see mine it's a bit dark but my seam allowance is just sitting to the side and that's what we want because we want these straps now to be pressed so that that seam that we sewed was is right in the middle so that's how I'm pressing mine look so you can see that seam line down the middle here and then because we're on the outside of the fabric depending on what fabric you've got so long as it's not going to be marked you could just go straight in and press these flat and I would press them over from both sides and just make sure that that's just all sitting nicely for you bless you that's my husband They're pressing nice and fat and flat and yep that that seam allowance is nice and splayed the reason we want that seam allowance to be nice and splayed is that if it was all to one side within your strap one side of your strap would be slightly thicker than the other side and so we want that to be look nice and even and to be nice and even so we just do just press these nice and flat now if you particularly want to You can now go and if you wanted to top stitch just down the edge of the straps here i did on the first one but i didn't on the second one and i won't do on this one because i think that these actually now that they're pressed and interfaced they do actually sit quite nicely just as they are so i don't think it needs it but should you wish to then you can do i would just lengthen your stitch length to a 3.5 probably or three or a 3.5 and then you want to stitch about an eighth of an inch yeah just you're almost just right on the very edge just there so set up your machine so that you can do that and we'll be doing some um some under stitching soon so if you're not sure just skip ahead and we'll we'll be doing some under stitching soon and you can have a look at doing that so we have our straps done now so we don't need now to attach the pattern piece we just need to keep these somewhere safe because we need to be working on the bodice front so they're out of the way just for the moment 
tidy things away. And then the next thing we're going to be working on is our, is our band. Okay, so the first thing I'm going to be working on is the back bodice band first. And I'm going to take my pattern piece off, making sure that I know which is the top and the bottom. And I'm going to put the lining to my bodice band piece so that the wrong sides are together. I just need to trim this off slightly as well. So again, if you just need to trim some of yours back slightly, then please do so. Just to make sure that you know where your stitching line is so that we can keep to that one centimetre seam allowance. Just make sure you don't lose your notches if you've got any notches that you've put in. Okay, so it's only a smidge, but it does just sometimes make all the difference. So let's put our right side of our body span down onto our work surface. And I've got the shorter edge up, the top side up. And then we can then put our lining band straight on top of that. Match your edges together, just there, and put the pin in. Go to the other end and put your pin in at the other end first. So we get our start and our end points matched. And then we can look for our notches and we can match up our notches as well to make sure that they're in place. I've got a notch just in there, I can see. So that's where my lining notch is going to be lined up with next. So I've done one end, then the other, and then the middle notch. And now I know how this should all fit together. So again, I've got another notch just there. That'll be for the straps. And then we've got another notch this side as well. And that's just put in. It's a fairly straight seam, so it doesn't matter so much about how many pins you have. Just put in as many as you're comfortable with. That's probably as many as I I'm going to be doing. Now, I'm going to do a bit and it's going to sound a bit counterintuitive to do, but what I've found is that by making up the band first all the way round and then at the end, so I'm, so I, I'm going to attach the front of the straps onto the front of the bodice when we get onto that bit, but I'm not going to attach the back of the straps onto the back of the bodice until we're in the final stages and then I'll talk to you before we close up all of the bodice how we get the straps into the right place and I've found that this works really well for me but it will at first feel a bit strange as to why I'm not slotting the, the straps in straight away. It is deliberate so just bear with me. So keep the straps to one side, pass them piece away. So we've got our band here, our lining onto the back band. So let's go across here. And I am going to be sewing all the way along. I'm not going to stop for the notches, okay? So line it up for you one centimetre. And then I'm going to now reverse and then back. So I'm just on a standard construction stitch here. And then put your needle down into the work. And I'm just going to sew the whole length of this. Stopping for my pins and keeping to my one centimetre seam allowance. Don't go too fast if you don't want to, just take your time, whatever speed you're comfortable at. It's not a race. It's more about getting a nice finish, just make sure everything's all lined up. So I went a bit off here, look with my cutting out. So I'm just going to smooth that off as much as I can. And then just to the end, and I'm just going to reverse at the end. Needle out of the work and take our straps off, pins off. Okay. So next thing I'm going to do then is get my iron and my ironing board. You might just move away to your ironing station. And then we're ironing on top of the lining, so that's fine. I don't need to put a press cloth on, but please use a press cloth if you're worried about your fabric. And I'm just going to press over that seam just to set those stitches. The next thing I'm going to do then is I am going to then fold the lining away from the top fabric and I'm going to press that down and back. You see, I'm just rolling that out of the way and just folding it back so we get a lovely edge. Then 
the next thing I'm going to do, with my iron all so still, is I'm now going to fold this over so that the edge of my dress, fashion fabric, is just barely visible and I'm just going to press it again. I'll just show you on the edge here. Just so that that's just that fashion fabric is just barely visible on that edge there. So that'll give us a nice finish to this bodice. We will later, when we put the straps in, go back and understitch, and I'll explain what that is. But we won't be doing that at this stage here because we later on we will be unpicking some stitches to slot our straps in but I've found that this is the best way of making sure that you get your straps in the right place on the back. So just, you have to just trust me. <laughs> trust me and bear with me, and then that will all be fine. The other thing that we're going to do at this point as well, if my iron stay still, it's lost a little leg on the iron, that's why it keeps rolling over, is we're going to turn up a one centimetre seam allowance. Where's my gauge gone that's fine so measure one centimeter up from the lining edge and then I tend to put pins in just to hold it in place just to give me a nice bit to work with and this is going to be ready for at the end when we finish so just to get a lovely night neat finish so again, once that's in place, you can just press that lining down. And if you're using a cotton or a viscose like I am, it'll give you a really nice edge. Pins out, just pop those into ironing board or into the fabric. Into, yeah, into ironing board, I can use my wool pressing mat. The pins do just stay in just nicely. Just turn up that edge, bit at a time. And then just give it a press. Just this last little bit to go. Probably don't need a pin for that because the other bit's staying quite nice and straight. There we go. Okay. So I want you now. To put your back band piece with your straps. We've finished that preparation for that section now. So we're going to take the pattern piece off your body's front and put that away. That's ready for another day. And then we're going to open out our fashion fabric and we're going to put that down so that the face is up, the upside is facing up. I've got a little bit to trim off. Look, so just go around and just trim off those little bits of interfacing if you need to. But it's, it's nice to do it when um, just before you use it because then you can also check to make sure that everything's all ironed down properly because the glue's had time to dry. And so if it hasn't stuck down properly, then you can go back in and just take it back over to your ironing board. So that's so it's really small bits, but it'll just help you stay nice and even. So let's have our fashion fabric with the facing side up. And now we're going to reach for our straps. Okay, and we're going to choose, so have a look at your straps. Now I've got this lovely design on here. I've got quite a lot of pink on my front of my design, but I've got a nice bit of turquoise there for one strap and a nice bit of turquoise there for another strap. So I'm going to push the pink to the back on mine. So just have a look and just have a look at your pattern and see which way you want it to go. Um, so I could have had one strap that way, you know, they're, they're interchangeable up and down, but I'm going to choose mine so that I've got those two bits of turquoise at the front. Then I'm going to take one strap at a time and I'm going to put it into the middle. So you can see where the points are, where they go up for the um, top. So the, here's your centre front neckline and it's going round and going up to the top of the shoulders here where the straps are going to fit. So you're going to put the best side to the side without the seam on it. So your smooth side, and that's going to sit right in the middle of that strap piece. Um, this straight edge just here at the top of the, so it's, it's at this top of the shoulder here. So I would just then just slide it up just slightly, literally just an eighth of an inch so that it's just proud 
over the top of your fabric just by about an eighth of an inch and then we're then going to put two straps two pins in to hold it in place we hot put two pins in like i said on the um, doing the twirl so that the strap doesn't twist one way or the other and again this side here so when i you've got your long part of your strap going down the bodice like we did on the twirl so that when we make this and we flick it up then you've got the long bit going over the shoulder so again i've got the turquoisey bit there so down measure it against the center of the so i can make sure i've got a little because the the cut edge here this straight edge here is slightly longer than the width of your strap and that's deliberate but put your strap in the middle of it and then just up eighth of an inch just to make sure it's just slightly proud. And that'll just make sure that we catch it properly. And then put your two pins in. So that's got those two onto there like that with the long straps dangling down back down the back. Or down the front actually, isn't it? Let's go back to our sewing machine. And I'm just going to put a little holding stitch in place across the top of these so it's going to be less than the seam allowance so literally just quarter of an inch from the top and you just and i'm just going to like i've got lined up with my press support so i've taken my first pin out hold on to your ends and i'm not reversing i'm just going to go just straight across and take our second pin out put your needle in your work and then i can move this along so i'm not wasting thread in the middle lift up my presser foot and then just do the same thing again. Stop before the next second pin and then just across. So that's how mine is all joined together. So let's take off the starting threads, put that in the bin, and then we're just gonna snip between the joining threads and that releases it. So that's how it looks. So it's just holding that strap in place on the top of the fashion fabric. Just like that one, that's probably a better one for you to see. So the thread on the on the fabric. Okay. So then just go to a longer work surface. Get your lining fabric, and then you're going to put the right side of your lining fabric down on top of your main pattern piece with the straps attached to it. The first thing we're going to do is let's go to the first centre notch, find your centre notches. On your lining and on your main bodice and then put a pin in at that section let's go across to the start match up your lining there and then you're going to put a pin in and then let's go across to the bottom edge other edge here and put a pin in so if you look we're always pinning our start and stop positions which are at the two sides and in this case we've got a middle reference point so put that in and that will make sure that all your fabric is evenly distributed on the two sides because you've got one side here and you've got your other side here so you need to make sure that that's all evenly distributed the next thing i'm going to do now is put a pin in our at the top of our straps here i am putting one but that's not holding the pin in that's not holding the strap and we've got all of this fabric here holding everything in place just make sure your straps are straight going straight down you don't want them across getting sewn so that they're at an angle like that underneath your fabric make sure that hanging straight down pin in the middle there so two more reference points and now we can pin it in between so just make sure that everything's all lying all nice and flat and then you're just going to get, go ahead and use your pins or your binding clips and just pop those in. I'll say pins and then, because that's what I'm using, but if you are then choosing to use binding clips, then you know that you can just use those instead. Just make sure your raw edges are, to, are together. So I've just had to pull that little raw edge down there, but that's fine. And sometimes you do get little changes in, in the way that you've cut out, especially when you're beginning and it might not fit, up, fit perfectly, but you could always lay your pattern piece, your paper pattern piece, it. you could always lay that back over your lining if you needed to and just make sure that you've made a good enough cut um that's the wrong way isn't it it's that way actually with the fold in the center so that you you're sure because if you've if you need to trim any extra off then you can do that at this stage so that would be always that would always be good so that you can sort that out so that can go over there like that okay so that's just to trim things up and just me trying to remember the things that i needed to do when i was a 
a beginner. So again, get your raw edges together where you're pinning so that you keep to the true shape. Because if we don't have our raw edges together and one slightly, so like there, can you see how the lining's wanting to go slightly proud on this edge? If we don't pull that back down into it again, you're going to then follow one edge or the other to do your seam allowance and it won't be the one centimetre on one part or the other. So that's why we just need to make sure that that's all, all together. So now we've got our pins all the way along our top. We're going to go to our sewing machine. And again, I'm on a 2.2 construction stitch for mine. And I'm going to use my one centimetre seam allowance mark just here. Feed the fabric in. And then I'm just going to take a couple of stitches forward and a couple of stitches back. That's enough just to hold that hem and then needle in the work before I take out my pin. So I do always, I'm always pinning a little way in from the edge just so I can get started on my machine. Now, when we're going round corners, this might be the first time you've done any corner sewing. So let me just help you with that. So we do a thing called pivoting. So what we can do is, the reason we leave our needle in our work like this, and hopefully I've, I've zoomed in for you, is because, and you can use either, I've got a button on mine that puts my needle in my work. So whenever I stitch a seam, my needle will always finish in my work. If you haven't got that function on your machine, and no worries if you haven't, use your hand crank, which is here, which operates your needle up or down. And just when you, when you take your foot off your pedal, just make sure you put that needle back into your work by hand first, before then you start to carry on. Because with that needle in, in your fabric and in your work, what you can do is then lift your presser foot, and we can now move that fabric any way we want to, and it's anchored in place by the needle. So that's, this is what we call pivoting. It just allows us to keep that needle in place, the fabric in place, and just to sew a really nice seam. If you don't do that, and I'll show you what happens if you don't do that. So if, if I forgot, say, and I got my needle out of the work, and I lifted up my presser foot, look what happened. As soon as I moved the foot, the needle out of the work, the, the fabric jumped. So the fabric then can jump anywhere. The, the, the stitches start to get long, and everything can just go really skew if you're not anchoring it down. So what we need to do is we need to remember to put either our needle in our work with our button or hand crank it down when we stop, and then you've now got your piece of work all anchored your fabric in there. If you don't, you get like a jog. So as you, you could be sewing a beautiful seam along here, and if you've not got your needle in your work, and you take it, lift your presser foot up, your fabric all of a sudden will jump, and it's quite difficult then to get it lined back up again, so you've got a smooth seam. So that, that's why we're trying to do it. We're trying to keep that, that stitched edge, especially on a neckline like this is, we want it to be lovely and smooth and, and keep it shape. So what we're going to do now is carry on for a moment because we've got a bit of a straight edge under the arm, which is the bit we're doing now. But I can see I've now lost my straight edge un uh, against the marker that I'm using for my seam allowance. So I remembered that I'm just slightly proud of my presser foot, so that will help me as we're going around the corner. So let me put my needle into my work and then I'm coming up to a pin, so let me take that one out. And now what we can do is we can lift our presser foot up we can just change angle just slightly so I can just see where I am with my seam allowance and take a few more stitches forward. Okay, and I can see I'm starting to go wide again. You can see from the edge of your presser foot and where your fabric is. So I'm going to leave, leave my needle in the work, lift up my presser foot and just turn it slightly so my next few stitches will be in line with the curve that we're trying to stitch around. So again, needle in the work, lift up the presser foot, and then just twist it and literally millimetres just for your next few stitches and you just keep doing that around your curves and that's how you can sew around a perfect circle or, or just even tighter than that if needs be when you get on to doing some a bit more stitching so again let's just twist this round slightly trying to keep to our one centimetre and I can see it going off so needle up again and in the end, you, you, you become so quick at this, you, you'll, you'll forget you're doing it, which I do sometimes when I'm trying to show you. So we're onto a straight stretch stitch up here. So we're going to now guess to where we are for our one centimetre and then turn our fabric again to make a right angle to go across the top of the strap. 
So I'll show you in a minute this lovely, neat curve we've got on the back here from doing that pivoting. So I'm going to start here and go across. So let's just do our one centimetre across the top here. And I am actually going to reverse and go back over the strap again and then come forward again so that that's nicely anchored. And then just off the strap, take a stitch and then twist again so we can carry on with our one centimetre. So hopefully you can see how putting your needle in your work just allows you to change that angle and then start stitching again. So let's take this pin out because we're coming up to that one now. And then we're going to keep to our one centimetre seam allowance. And sometimes you can just twist the fabric. This is a nice gentle curve. You can just sort of put a little bit of pressure on the, on, with this hand on your fabric and it'll twist for you and it'll keep that seam allowance. But if you get anything where it's bunching or it's trying to make it too difficult for you to see where you are, hopefully you can see, it's difficult with light, isn't it, to see, then you want to then stop and then you need to lift your presser foot and you need to pivot slightly. So here we go towards the centre front. Let's keep that lovely curve going. Let's stop and take our pin out. Just make sure everything else that you're coming up to is also lying flat. So I just had to adjust my strap. one centimetre because it's going to make sure your bodice is all lined nice and flat on the front. So we're coming back up to here again and if you need to as a beginner if you want to measure and put a drawn line by my fixie on pen hold on one second see if this one work. you can at these places where you're going to be changing direction you can just put your one centimeter and your one centimeter so it gives you a little bit of a cross to work to and I'll show you that when we get to that I probably should have said that before it's me it's me remembering things on the hoof so let's keep going to the top here I'm just going to pivot slightly just there to the top and then across the top here start going down this side again and I will need to be pivoting again because this is a slightly more curvy angle on the edge here so make sure everything's lying flat pins out as you get to them straighten up Don't forget to reverse at the end just to hold it while your stitch is steady. Okay, which way can you see better? Probably that way. So can you see my stitch line, how lovely and straight that is? It's, it's not a straight line, it's a curved line. How lovely and smooth that curve is and that's from doing the pivoting under that arm. And then we've got across the top here, that's kept to our one centimetre. This angle here, we didn't need to pivot quite so much because that's a much more gentle angle. If you look at that one to this one, much more gentle angle. We've gone through to the centre point. Now also, good, good reference point here as well. So can you see my little snip into my lining fabric there? Can you see how it's not gone all the way down to the stitch line to the one centimeter for the seam allowance that's perfect if you know when i said to you before about making your snips make sure you don't snip like that where you've got all of the blade over your fabric just so you can just do that little snip when we're marking them and what that means is that then we've got a lot of integrity of the fabric beyond the snip point before we get to our stitch line to make sure that we've not gone over so Again, that's all you need just to be able to mark your fabric. You don't, and I think this is the best way of demonstrating it. You don't need your stitch, your snip mark to come beyond where your stitching line is going to be. So you have to be very careful with that. 
So the next thing that we're going to do now is going to snip into our curve because we're going to make this curve sit right. So at the moment, if I just if I if I don't snip one and then I snip the other, and I'll show you the difference. So let's do let's snip this half. So we've got a curve all the way along the front of this neckline. So from the halfway point, if you just sit and watch for a second, halfway point, I'm just going to extend that snip almost up to but not to the stitches because it's on a curve if this was on a straight line I wouldn't be doing this and then every centimeter or so I am just doing the same thing and I'm just going to a few millimeters away from that stitched edge we don't want to go through the stitches we're going up to but not through you'll hear me saying that quite a lot up to but not through and the tighter the curve the closer together those snips want to be. So that's what that's looking like now. Can you see how that's all snipped? And the reason is that when we pull it straight, can you see how there's gaps in between these snips at the top here? And that's what we want. We want that fabric to be able to pull straight, to be able to um, curve. The same again here. I'm going to now do snips down this curved edge as well towards the underarm. I'm doing them slightly closer together because that curve is slightly steeper. And then as we get to the end here, we don't need so many. So can you see how they're closer together than these ones down here? Now on the top just here, we're just going to take off what's called to take off some of the bulk. So I'm going to take off some of this, the fabric at an angle where these points are. Oh, and I wanted to show you that bit, didn't I? Can you see where I did the little cross on the, with my pen? So that can help you know where you are. So I did one line for this seam allowance and I did one line for the other seam allowance and then where they intersected, that's where I then stopped and pivoted. So I'm taking off the sides here, but I'm not taking off the top. So you just want to take it so that you've got a nice bit, a nice amount of fabric still there to be able to work. And I'm not snipping on top of there because that's a straight edge, so we don't need to snip that. But I want this fabric here to stay there because I want that to remain intact for, for the next stage that we're going to be doing. So at the moment, I've only snipped one half, but you're going to snip both halves of your um, bodice front because I want to show you the difference between how this fits, how this all lies. So I've got one side here, look, no snips, and then one side here with all the snips in. So let's get our ironing board again. Everything lying flat. And we're just going to press our seam now. So we're just going to press on top of our stitches to set that seam. And then the next thing we're going to start and do, let's work from the centre front first, is we're going to push that lining, fold it, taking the lining off and just fold, roll it back. And then you just use the nose of your iron and you're just going to be pushing that lining up and out of the way. And I'm going up into these shoulder bits here where we've got the straps. Let's do that all the way along the neckline first. Okay. And then let's move the strap out of the way and let's do the underarm as well. So again, I'm just pushing all of that lining fabric up and out the way. You can use your press cloth if you want to as well. Okay, put that to one side. So what we can do now is if you just give a little tug on your sleeve, your sleeve will now pull through from your dress and give you a beautifully finished edge just here. And do that again on this side. So you've just got your line, fashion fabric in your lining where your strap is. Just lift your strap up and just give a little pull on your strap and your lining will fold backwards. Because eventually this lining is all going to fit inside here. And first of all, let's try and iron. This is, so that's our bodice now with our straps both back. Let's now take our lining here and try and get this to sit flat. And can you see already how this is all bunching up on the top here? This is the side that I haven't snipped. So if I try and get my fashion fabric to lie flat on my ironing board, can you see how it's just not wanting to just lie flat and it keeps wanting to curl up? Let me just go on to that. And that, that will then make it difficult for when you come to press it. Same on the neckline. The neckline's slightly smoother 
but it's just going to give it a strong, a, just a bit of a, a buckled look to the edge of the fabric. So let's just go to here, to where our lining is, and hopefully you can see that that is already lying much flatter. And by looking through the lining, hopefully you can see that. Can you see through to the little snips? Can you see how each one has just spread slightly? Hopefully in the light you can see. And that means that it's just giving that little bit of give to the corner so that when we then press this down, that seam there will lie absolutely perfectly flat for you. And it's the same with the neckline. So if you've been doing dressmaking on other things, I mean, again, here, look at the lining. Look at the two halves. Guess which side has been snipped and which side hasn't. How much prouder that one's wanting to stand up, whereas this one here, this side here, is wanting to sit just nicely. OK, so that's just a demonstration. You don't need to press yours at this stage, but what I am going to do is I'm just going to just tuck my strap back in again and I'm just going to snip my seam because I always snip my curves so let me just do this one first because and if you by accident as a, again as a beginner if you by accident get a bit over enthusiastic with your snips and you snip beyond your stitching line just join about an inch before and then just smooth out but just take like a millimeter more into your bodice fabric and and then come back along the edge so do a, another row of stitches just like a millimeter just start exactly on it here but gently go down and as you go towards it just go a, a millimeter beyond into your garment and that will then make that um edge just sit nicely for you and it'll just repair that seam because otherwise if you don't do anything with it it will it will be um compromised and it'll as you're wearing your garment and especially as it's being laundered then it will then at some stage that seam will pop open and that'll be a real shame and it's easier to fix it now than it is later on so let me just again just trim off the edge of that strap and that one put bits out of the way because what i want you to do now is put those bits in the bin it just go back and I know that I've pressed mine over but can you remember when we had it like this just put my strap back through again and we pushed all of our seam allowance so we pushed our lining over the top of our bodice and we had our seam allowance was lying on our cutting mat or our pressing mat and you want to just re-stitch re it so if you were following me and you've just just pressed yours like I did and pressed it right over just go back and just make sure that all of your seam allowances is lying flat on your pressing mat make sure that you've not got any bits like this where it's tips under can you see how we've got gaps where it's tipped under just smooth those all out you want them all of your seam allowance out and pressing away from the bodice your main bodice Right. make sure I've got this all right for you show you the next bit because we're going to do something called under stitching so put my ironing board out of the way skill builder on under stitching in my section of videos and it's really really important thing to do because it gives you just such a wonderful finish let me just get a pointing tool for a moment so I can show you what I mean okay so this is why I wanted the lining and the main fabric different so I can show you. So with under stitching, you're going to attach all of your seam allowance to your lining. We're going to stitch about an eighth of an inch or a couple of millimeters in onto the lining. We're going to use this fashion fabric and this seam line as our guide, but you're going to just stitch a couple of millimeters into the lining. And what that does is it You've got to make sure you've got all of your seam allowance because you're attaching your seam allowance to your lining because then when you iron and press that curve, the, the lining can't go into the edge here, onto the, um, onto the edge of your garment. And it just sort of rolls a little bit of your fashion fabric towards the side of your lining so that when you're wearing your garment like this, you've got a lovely, neat edge. So if you don't, when you press it, sometimes you get a situation like that where you can see the lining over the top of your fashion fabric. And what we want is we want that lining to sit beautifully behind that seam. And this is how we do it. So 
you're going to line up a mark on your presser foot. So let me just show you this one, so this one's mine. So what I tend to do is I use this line just here where there's a gap between the between the um, metal and the plastic and there's a nice little sort of line there for me to follow that goes straight into my presser foot here. So I can move my needle right across to the left hand side in there and then I can run that edge of my presser foot along that sewn seam that I've done and it will just put that stitch right in the right place to give me a couple of millimetres onto my lining fabric. So I can just run that along like that, just so that I can show you. And this is why I get say to you to get used to moving your needle left and right, because we can get so much more accuracy if we do that. So I've still got on a 2.2 construction stitch. You can turn it up to a three if you want to, but you don't need to, it's, it's just going to hold it. But the one thing I am gonna do is I'm gonna stay at start about an inch in from my cut edge. So I'm going to just start just there, okay? So an inch in. So let's lay our fabric down onto our bed. Let's adjust the seam that we've just stitched and the difference between the transition place between your lining and your fashion fabric on that groove that I showed you. And now let me now move my needle across so that I've just got a couple of millimeters into my lining. I also make sure that all of, I can, well, on here I can see through, but sometimes you can't. Just make sure that you can see all of the seam allowances sitting underneath your lining fabric or feel it with your finger, you can feel a ridge because you want all of that to be over to that side as well. Sometimes it just gets folded back when you're stitching and then it makes it bumpy and we don't want a bumpy neckline. So you can just take a couple of stitches forward, a couple of stitches back, and then put your needle in your work just to hold that steady for you, okay? And now, if I try and keep my hands out of the way, I'm going to kind of almost straighten this edge here a little bit as I stitch. So I'm going to be guiding all the time my fabric, the transition here, all the way along that section. I'm not watching my needle, I just watch the presser foot and just get that lining up straight. Go nice and slow, take a breath, and take a rest and then as we're going up towards this strap you won't be able to go all the way we're going to go as far as we can but again I'm just straightening it out slightly as I stitch and you'll see the gaps in your um, seam allowance open up to accommodate that do a little bit and then stop and then just readjust again and I'm going to go as far as I can Just, just, I'm just kind of pulling the two sides together, my fashion fabric away from my lining, just to give me a lovely clear edge to follow. Right, when I get as far as I can, I'm just going to do a couple of stitches back and a couple of stitches forward. And then I'm taking my needle out of the work. And let me show you what this looks like. So if I leave a long thread, what I can also do is we can pull on the back thread and then it makes a little loop and then we can just pull through on the loop and that means then we've got no little edges on the back here at all. It's all nice and neat. And then what I do then, you can just snip your threads off if that's too much detail for you, then just snip your threads off. But in time, again, if you get used to just doing these little bits, it, does make, it doesn't add much time to making it, but it, it just means it stays really nice. So there's my understitching on there. You see the white thread just through along there. And then when I fold that over, all of that lining has just gone to the back and it, all, it looks lovely and neat on the front here, okay? You can't go all the way up into your straps because it's just too tight. So what we're gonna do again now is we're gonna start the other, I'll tell you what we could, um, you might find it easier sewing in towards your straps rather than away from it because if you're sewing away from it, you've got to try and get your presser foot into all of this section here. So, Let's start at centre front again. It's all going to match up. So roughly centre front, let's position our stitches again because we want to be sewing into our straps all the time. So I position that it roughly in the middle, again, of, of the bodice piece, of the centre front of the bodice piece. I'm just starting in the middle here. And then I've got my threads to hold on to. And then I've got my the transition between my fashion fabric and my lining lined up. And then we're going to take a couple of stitches forward, if I can find my pedal under the desk. Okay, 
and then a couple of stitches back and then put your needle in your work okay and then just just smoothing your fabric out so that you've put you've just put a little bit of pressure to pull them apart and then we're just going to go across again just keep your eye on your mark on your presser foot and I'm just pushing can you see I'm pushing that into that so make a little pocket where the strap is so that we can get as close into that as we can it's a nice gentle curve this one so not quite so much manipulation needed and again just pulling those two pieces of fabric apart but when it starts to then get tricky and to bubble underneath just make sure you've not got anything folded underneath your work as well then I'm just going to stop there and I'm just going to use my reverse button now. Just take a couple of stitches forward and a couple of stitches back. Needle out of the work. Let's take those edges off. Let's just go back again. Let me just show you that bit where you can pull on the thread. So if you find your thread off on the inside and just give it a pull, you'll see the fibres come up, from, the thread come up from the other stitch, and the half stitch underneath. You can put something just inside and that pulls the little loop out and if you pull it on that it just pulls the threads through so you don't have like little snips on the back here you've got it all, all your threads together and again let's just tie this together because we're trying to get the very best finish possible aren't we there's nothing worse than somebody saying oh did you make your dress and you're like well how can you tell i've been really careful and all these little things just just do add up to make it better so again where we started we can try and do that little thing again to pull that thread through sometimes it gets tangled and if it gets tangled just thread your top thread onto a needle a hand sewing needle and then just use that just to poke it through for you so that's what i usually do i usually do three knots but two should be fine and then i usually leave about a one centimeter tail and then just leave that just like that, just sticking up on the inside, so that's fine. So as you can tell, we're just doing it in sections because I want us to get as close to the straps as we can. And then again, when we get onto this next, so now I'm going to turn my fabric round, so the fashion, so the, um, fashion fabric's on the other side. And so I need to move my needle across to the other side now, position number six for me in order that I can start this side. So can you see how my fashion fabric's turned over to this side? Got to start at an inch in from the edge, just at those side edges, and I'll show you why in a minute. And with a couple of stitches forward, a couple of stitches back, and then needle in the work. And then make that little pocket where you tuck your, your strap in. Just smooth and just make sure you've got everything all, all out of the way and your seam allowance is all towards your lining. And then I'm going to run that mark on my presser foot down along the lining, that joining. When you get as close as you can, just reverse. And you need it out of the work. Leave the threads. Oops. And then we're going to go where we were before. So I'm going to start here, see how I started at the middle here. I'm going to join my needle just at that point there and a couple of stitches and then forward. And it could be invisible on the actual garment when you, when you um, are wearing it. It'll just make sure that it's nice and neat. So a couple of stitches forward, a couple of stitches back. Needle in the work. Just tuck that strap in just so that we've got a pocket for it and then you can be smoothing your fabrics apart. Just make sure your seam allowance is staying under. And coming up to that little pocket, so just take your time here. Just go as close as you can. As soon as it gets tricky, then just take a couple of stitches backwards just to finish off. So then just make sure we've got all the way along the edge. Yes, we have. So now we can just finish those little stitches off here that we've done just by pulling those threads through. That's another one. And tie these off. So I'll just tie these off and then I'll come back to you and we'll We'll talk about 
what we've done and how we move on to the next bit. Okay, so here's our top. So let's have a look. We've got our understitching all the way up. Started from an inch from the edge here, all the way up to the strap. Stopped just before the strap and then went across, which is again why we double stitched that strap when we sewed it, just to make sure that was nice and neat. We've started a little way away from the edge here and that's fine because we can then come down here to the centre where we are two lots of stitches meet because we did one direction one way and one the other. Up to the other stitch, up to the strap and then all the way down the other side. So all we can do now is we can just fold this over, set our iron and our ironing board again. And you'll find there's lots of pressing involved, but it really does make a difference to your stitching if you can get into the habit of, of um, pressing as you go. So let's go to this edge first, this front edge. Smooth down the lining as we, as we are doing like that. So I've got my fashion fabric down onto my pressing mat. And you'll see that this lining now wants to just give you a beautiful edge all the way up to that strap. So we can just help that along now with a little bit of press and a little bit of steam up to the strap, just make sure your strap's pulled out fully. If you find that your fabric is holding on to your strap and your strap's not, not come out properly, it just means you've not gone wide enough past the edges of the strap when you were stitching. So when you were stitching this bit here, you've probably stayed a bit narrow and stayed on top of your um, straps. I would just take out those stitches holding that in place because you've still got it tacked in and then make your curve go a little bit closer to this seam allowance at the edges so you've got a wider line of stitching across not a deeper line but a wider line of stitching across your strap because if you feel with your fingers and if you maybe look on your lining side you'll be able to see where you where your end of your strap is you can feel it and then that's where you want to be almost like one stitch just off the edge of your strap on either side just as you are just in order before you then change direction to go down the arm curve. So again, I'm just trying to think of things that might might crop up. But if, if something crops up that I've not covered, then just leave me a message down, da downstairs, um, down below in the comments section, and I will then answer and help you as best as I can in order to um, rectify whatever it is that's not quite going right for you or put you on the right direction, in the right direction. Okay, so there's our lovely, lovely straight neckline and you can turn it over and press it from the front as well. Just be careful you don't damage your, your fabric. Use your press cloth if you need to. Okay, so there's the front of our bodice, all beautifully made beautifully edged and our straps all ready. So the first thing that we're going to do doing next is just put that to one side is we're going to go back to our back section because I just want to talk to you about how to add a label on if you want to add a label on to your um, clothing because I'm going to add one in for my mum. So um, I'll just show you how to do that. So just one second. There's one thing I, I forgot before we did that is we just need to turn up one centimetre as well on the edge of this bodice piece too. So let's just turn up like we did on the on the front. Use your seam gauge to measure your one centimeter. Put pins in if you need to, just to hold it in place for you. And then you're just going to press that one centimeter in place all the way along. Okay, so once you've so once you've um, just ironed, pressed that one centimetre seam edge, we're going to just put that front bodice to one side for a minute and go back to our back bodice because I'm going to show you how to put a label on the inside of your garment should you wish, um, because I want to do that for my mum. I've got some little handmade by garment labels that I put in, but you you could you might have other ones, but it's just nice to put it in now because otherwise you might forget and I I do sometimes forget so and it's a bit trickier to try and put it in afterwards. So let me get my labels and I'll show you how I put mine in. So here are my labels, handmade by Claire England in that gold thread. And, the, and I found I have found that this isn't itchy at all in the back of the dress at all. I put them in a lot of my husband's shirts and a lot of my clothes and I don't, don't notice it at all. Sometimes they come on a long row and then you've got like these little breaker marks on the edge. 
so a little woven breaker mark on the edge um, and then I just snip them with my pinking shears and then they just are then individual ready for me to use and what I do is on that edge I just fold the edge of the label back so that the that little marker is out of the way it's just showing you where the end of the actual stitching and the end of the label is and that's going to give it a nice neat edge on the end there then take my back piece and I'm going to fold it in half and I just put a pin down at the halfway point oh I get my pin through the fabric so that tells me where that is and then I take my label and I put the edges together so that gives me a halfway point and I just finger press it with my fingers and then I position it so that that crease line is on the set in line with the pin going down the middle and somewhere in the middle as well and then I just put a pin through the middle of it just to hold it in place at the moment try and make sure it's straight and then I can take that pin out and then you can usually fold the edges back so that you can just put a pin across the end here making sure that it's straight that's it and then folding that end in there I'm just going so I'm just going through the lining now I'm not going through all the way the first pin went through all through all the sections but now I'm just going through just the lining on its own there we go and then I can take that center pin out and my label is now attached just to my lining like that so then I'm going to load up the machine with thread to match my label I use like um, a flesh off an off-white flesh colored um, fabric and um, thread and then I'm going to show you how I just stitch this on so because this is a very pale label then I've just changed my top thread and I've still got my white bobbin thread in but all that I do then is go along to here now I, I use my again I'm using the hole in my presser foot so I'm going to stitch with my needle in this part here so right across to the left and then I've got only a bit of the presser foot on top of the label you can go this side as well but I've found that if I run the very edge of the label just through there and I'm just stitching on it I can I can get a much neater finish so you've got to learn how using your presser foot and the little gap in it helps you so let me move that across to a zero position so that I've got that right on the very edge the other thing I do is I don't reverse on these labels at all we're going to do that invisible finishing technique that we did did for the top stitching so just make sure that your stitch is going to land in your label and, and that you're straight and you've got hold of your threads and then I just start stitching, I don't reverse. So when I've got so far down then I'll put my needle in my work and if you've got an, an, what's called an awl, which is a point, either a pointer tool like this, which is great, an awl, A-W-L, really really good you can use the, the nose of your quick and pick but you've just got to be careful not to get the blade of your quick and pick involved because then as i get closer to the edge i want to take out my pin without moving my label and i can use the awl to hold the label in place as we get quite close to the edge and then i want to stop on the very edge lift up my, with my needle in my work lift up my presser foot and then i'm going to twist down Okay, change direction and then I'm going to stitch down the edge of the label one more stitch and then pivot again oh, I, can probably, I can probably do one more stitch as well oops so let me just get excited there wasn't I so one more stitch and then pivot again and then come along the bottom edge You're getting close to the bottom edge and you take your pin out just make sure the little tags the little tags on the end of your label are poked under because you know the little legs that you've sort of like folded in under himself one more stitch maybe one more that's it and then pivot again with my needle in my work and then come back up again pivot again and I'm just going to sweep the leg of that label underneath because it's just poking out I can just see it and then I'm going to just come back to where I started and then just 
let my stitches just almost join up. So almost take one stitch over and then needle out the work. I haven't reversed again, if you notice. So that's how it looks with before I've taken my threads out. Hopefully you can see how that's all joined together because then what we do is we go back to the inside, use my quick unpick on my awl, and then I'm just going to pull on the thread that's come through so I get that loop. And it wants to work properly, there it goes. And then pull on that loop and that takes that one through. And then if I go to the other one and pull on the other one until I can see the loop, I can't see that loop so this is a good way for me to show you so I'll take my needle thread my hand sewing needle with the top thread and then what I'm going to do is use my needle and go right in where that thread has come out and push it through into the back take the needle off you don't need it again now you just push it through into the back And I take the two sets of threads. You can either just tie them together or you can tie them just singularly into it, you know, with, with each top and bobbin thread together. And I just do the three stitches, three knots. And I don't get tangled up. That's it. And then I then do about a centimetre and then I take that out. And then that's how my label looks when that's put on so it might be little there's a little bit of fraying thread just there let me just take that off just fold your fabric back just take that edge off just so it's poked out and so that's the labeling okay you could have skipped past that oh if you've got one of the labels like this kind where it's just like a wash care label and you want it to go on the inside where we've turned it under, so you've got a notch at the centre back, just put a finger press in the middle of your label. So you've got a little finger press line like that. Find your notch and put your label so that it is, now you want it to be face down, so right side of your label against the inside of your lining. And put your pins in and then stitch across it. Because then when you flick that down, when we sneak in the inside edge, that's going to then flick down and sit inside your garment. So you want your right side of your gar um, label against the inside of your lining. Line, it, line the label up so that you've got some, some edge to be able to catch inside the seam allowance because we've folded this edge over, haven't we? And just pressed it. And then when you stitch that on the line and then you twist it, fold it over, then you'll have your little wash care label inside like that. Okay, let's carry on. So let's take our newly labelled back piece and we're going to open it out so the lining and the fashion fabric is stretched apart. We're then going to take our front bodice piece and we're going to open that out too and we're going to put fashion fabric to fashion fabric. And what you're going to do is then find your place where the seam allowances here match and we're going to use that as our first matching point. So you might just have to pull your seam allowance out slightly. So can you see where those two bits there are matching? And you're going to just go right in that valley and you're going to put a pin to join those together. And we want a really nice transition at that point. And, in, and this is why we started a little way in, because if you've, if you've understitched right to the very edge, you can't pull that apart enough to get a nice transition at that point. So that's why that little bit was important. Now we go to the edge of the fashion fabric and let's put a little stick, a little pin in there. And then let's go to the edge of our lining. Open out your seam allowances and then put a pin in just there. So that's one edge there done and you can see this shape now where it goes down and comes up again if I hold it like that perhaps you can see so let's go to the other side again now seam allowance lie on top of each other on the fashion fabric side oh not on the lining side isn't it what am I saying because we stitched that down and then the pin's going to go right at that junction right in between those two where those two fabrics meet 
then down to the edge at the bottom of the fashion fabric. So put a pin in there just away from the edge and then open out your seam allowance on your lining side and then we're going to do a pin just there as well. Okay, so let's go to our sewing machine, set it back up again. So we're back onto our correct seam allowance for doing our one centimetre seam allowance. And then I'll start with this edge first. It doesn't really matter which edge you start with. And then we've got, so just make sure you've got that, that, that ironed edge seam allowance just folded out flat. And then match up for your seam allowance. We're gonna start right on the edge, couple of stitches forward, couple of stitches back, and then needle in the work. Take your pin out. And then you're heading at a slight angle just to this intersection just here. So let's just keep heading there with our one centimetre seam allowance. Getting close, but so I just want to take my pin out for the minute, but I'm taking it out at the very last minute. Couple more stitches until we're right on that stitching line. And then we're going to lift our presser foot up. We're going to pivot slightly because we've got this V that we're sewing into this garment so that it's the shape in front of the arms. And now we're going to sew down the other side. to reverse at the edge here. Take our starting threads off. So this is what it looks like when you've sewn. So we've got our seam allowance here folded flat. So that's all been sewn together into the centre here. And then we've pivoted there to change direction. And then we've double um, reversed here. Just to remind you, there's no, we've not folded back any seam allowance on the fashion fabric edge and that's deliberate. So now what we can do is we'll take this over to the ironing board and we're going to press each piece separately just to open it out and then when we fold it back we should have a really really lovely junction just like that and then when we fold that under it's going to give us a really nice underarm point. Okay. Let me just do the other side first and then we'll, we'll iron it flat. Okay, so let's go back to our ironing board. And this is where if you have got any of the um, pressing hams, they can really help. So I've got a sausage shape one like this. If you've not got one like this, you can just use a roll up towel as well, but it'll just lift that piece of work off the, off the flat ironing bed for you, off your pressing board for you. Open out your seam and, oh, we haven't, let's, let's press our stitches first, shall we? do this as well so just set those stitches just into our work I nearly forgot my own steps didn't I then and then I've got my pressing ham there and I'm just going to fold out the seam allowance which is nice and flat and then press that flat all the way up to that point where we change direction not going all the way along just do your lining or your fashion fabric first and then pull this section out so that you've got the right angle on everything just pressed it into that section there and turn it round and now let's press our fashion fabric so just open out that seam allowance just because we're working on top of interfacing just into that corner just there the other side And then when we now fold this over, so lining goes over to the fashion fabric, you've got a lovely edge there. And you can now just sit that over the top of your pressing ham. Just press that nice and flat. And then the last thing that we'll do is we'll just reinstate on the lining that one centimetre seam allowance. Sometimes it just needs smoothing out between the two. If you're a really A star student, then it'll probably line up. But just reinstate that where it just had where we had to press it flat and then again this section here so you just you just reinstating that fold line between the lining and the fashion fabric just press that flat and then just fold under your seam allowance and just make that smooth and just press that again okay just move my mat out of the way. Oh my. 
pan and press flap because you can now give yourself a round of applause because you have now three quarters, well over three quarters, finished this bodice now. So that is all we needed to do for this bodice at this stage. Eventually, <clears throat> these straps will be fitted into here. But what I want is I want the rest of the dress on it first it before I start to determine how long I need the straps because don't forget the weight of the dress might pull the, the actual garment down, the bodice down slightly when you're wearing it, which is why I'm not fitting it now. But all we'll need to do when we're doing that is we will separate out these sections, which is why we've not understitched the back. We will separate out our seam allowance and our top and our lining. Oops, if I can just do it to show you. And then we will locate with our quick and pick one stitch and we will just undo one stitch and then undo a section in line roughly with where that notch is on the back there. Can you remember we had the notch on the back for telling us where to put the straps? It'll probably end up there. But this is the way that you get a perfect match on the back with your bra straps. Because at the moment, if you follow the notch and you sew that all in you and finish it all off, you've then got a lot to undo in order to position that strap properly. But if we just leave it loose, we can then either safety pin it or we can pin it on whilst we're trying it. And then if you've got a friend or a fit buddy, when you're wearing it, you can then position this strap anywhere you like along this edge and then pin it, get somebody to pin it in place or take a note of it. And then we can then unpick the stitches in here where we need to. Because once we've got those straps in the right place, we're going to do that under stitching again. We're going to take our lining, we're going to, our seam allowance, we're going to open out our lining and our main fabric, and we're going to push the seam allowance up into the lining section, and then we're going to under stitch on this back again. But we don't do that until the very, that's almost the very, it's not quite the very last thing, but it's almost the very last thing before then we need to and everything else off inside. So it's very deliberate that I've not put the end of the straps in at this stage because this is what I found works really well for me. So I hope you like it. I hope my mum's going to like it. Got a lovely sparkly label in the back um, and I'll just turn the camera around and we'll just have a quick chat. So you might think that was quite a laborious way to sew with just a simple band but in actual fact there's quite a lot of techniques in there that you can take to any garment that you might make in the future. You know, you've, you've, you've learnt pivoting and how to sew around a curve. You've learnt how to clip into the curve to get that to lie nice and flat. And then you've learnt understitching where we um, attach the seam allowance to the lining. And that gives that lovely neck edge so that none of your lining is going to be ever be poking out and you're going to see it. And all of and then attaching labels. And all of that has, will start to build for you in your knowledge base that, as I say, you can take to any garments. It doesn't matter whether you're doing doll making, dress making, children's, home decor, whatever. All of these tips and tricks will really help you. So I know it's quite a long video, and I know that they are, but again, just trying to pick those tips in for you. But I think you'll agree we've got a really, really lovely looking um, bodice band. For our dresses so that should should sit really prettily I might end up with the dress for myself never mind about for mum but hopefully she likes she'll like it too um, when we actually get this dress all fully made to for her so that's the end of this lesson today or this section of the video today and um, sound like a school teacher don't I sorry um, we've got that all ready and we're going to pop that to one side because the next thing we're going to be working on is actually the side panels now the tiered and gathered side panels for the next part of the dress um, but I'm going to leave it there for now um, if you've enjoyed the video and you're not a subscriber, then please do consider subscribing. If you don't want to, absolutely fine. Just keep checking back for when I've loaded a new video. It's a bit sporadic at the moment, um, but I am trying to get this dress finished quite quickly because I've got a friend coming over to visit me in Spain, and so I want it all done before she, she arrives. And then I will be doing a trial on with my mum when um, I go and see her towards the um, later in the month when I go and see, and she can try it on and see how she's if it's fitting and if we've got it right and I'll hopefully do a little bit of a video of her trying that on to show you as well but yes hope there's some th tips you've picked up hope you've enjoyed stitching along with me today it's been great what's well, from my point of view it's been great anyway um and I'm really pleased with the progress we're making and I'll speak to you all soon take care everybody bye